a lot of chatter out there about, you know, someone's got a big buck pattern or what they're gonna shoot this year or they're waiting for this, that, the other. I wanna go over my harvest plan for the season. Right off the bat, first afternoon, if I see a big old nanny doe, I'll be taking the shot. You know, my family, my friends, some of the growing deer team, we all love venison. And providing fresh venison is a huge reward for a hunter. We're, we're providers and providing that fresh venison for our family and friends should be a trophy among trophies. In addition, we need to work to balance the adult sex ratio. And I think more importantly, from a biological point of view, is make sure the amount of deer on the landscape is balanced or slightly below the amount of high quality groceries. If you have a habitat that can't produce enough groceries for the deer herd, then none of the deer are gonna be healthy. None of them are gonna express their full potential. There's no problem getting people to harvest bucks, but even after all these years and all this information, most people I know fail to meet their doe harvest objective. We've been incorporated more than three decades, and from my experience, the number one reason fail to meet their doe harvest objective is they wait to fill their buck tag first. Oh, I'm gonna hunt does during the late season, or I'll get that old big buck tag, and then I'll start hunting does. I've learned that I start shooting does on day one, and I keep shooting when the opportunity presents for a good shot until I've met my harvest quota. How do you come up with that quota? Everyone wants a mathematical formula or how many deer do I have per square mile? That rarely exists. Here's what I want you to do. If your food plots are, you know, eight to the soil or the preferred native vegetation is almost non-existent where you hunt, you need to harvest more does. You can do that based on experience. If you've hunted the same property for several years and, you know, for the last four or five years, you've taken a dozen or so does off the property, and your food plots are still nothing but dirt and little nubs sticking up, you know you need to up the doe harvest. You're not removing enough does to let the forage catch up with the deer herd. Another really good indicator is the whole weight, the whole body weight of adult does that are two years old or older. If you're keeping any records at all, if you're only keeping one record, I would suggest you keep the whole body weight of adult does. That's because it's a really good indicator of the habitat quality. And if you've got three or four years of data and that trend is going down, the doe body weights are decreasing, you know you've got way more mouths and quality food on the property, you need to up that doe harvest. If the body weights are about the same and buck antler size is about the same and you're wanting something bigger, you know you need to reduce the number of mouths so those bucks can eat more and express more of their genetic potential. Most of this conversation has been about does because we're talking about balancing the amount of deer with the amount of quality forage and does are the reproductive factory. Now it takes two to tango, but does are the ones having fawns. One buck can breed a lot of does. And if you're trying to somehow control the population and number of deer, you do that through doe harvest. Every time we post a picture of passing up a buck or talking about the age of a buck, we get those old comments, well, boy, you can't eat those horns, or I'm a meat hunter. I'm always thinking to myself, well, if you're a meat hunter, why don't you harvest them some does? They're plentiful in almost all the areas of the whitetails range. And what's wrong with those of us that just enjoy chasing a mature buck? Because, oh my goodness, he's down right there on the spot. Where's it written that we have to harvest every buck we see? Now, I wanna make this clear, man, if you're a limited on time and you're working hard that night shift, providing for the family, or you're a brand new hunter, you don't have a lot of experience yet, Please harvest any deer that makes you happy, that's legal, and pleases the landowner. The first couple of deer I harvested were button bucks, and I look back on those moments with my family as just great hunting experiences. But if you've been around a good bit, or you want to see bigger antlers where you hunt, 
the number one determinant of antler size is age. So if you want to see bigger antlers, you got to allow some of those immature bucks to reach maturity and they have larger antlers. This works fine unless you're on a lease or a property or, you know, got a couple brothers arguing, well, I want bigger deer. I just want to shoot the first deer I see. And that leads to conflict. So on private land, I believe the buck harvest criteria should be set by the landowner or whoever he designates to take care of the deer hunting. That's the guy paying taxes on the land or the gal and, you know, doing all those things. And I believe it's their privilege to say, I want to manage the deer herd this way. If you're on public land, then of course, whatever the state sets as the regulations should be the regulations for all hunters out there. I know some hunters that hunt exclusively public land. They get it further back in there than most people. They do stuff a little different and they consistently tag mature bucks. You can do it on public land, most public land. Now, if you're hunting the first little block of public land outside some big urban area, and it seems like there's orange behind every tree, there's probably not a lot of mature bucks running around there. You may need to go to a different section of public land. Growing deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. We manage deer herds basically from the harvest point of view anyway by doe harvest. And if you think the body weight should be more in that area or the antlers should be larger, one of the strong considerations should be do you have more does or more deer for the amount of groceries on the property and are the bucks reaching maturity? Are they get living old enough to allow their antlers to express their full potential? If you're hunting an area that all the cat briars browsed off, all the food plots are nibbled to the ground. There probably needs to be an increased doe harvest. We need to reduce the amount of mouths competing for the food resource in that area. And the way to meet that objective is start during the early portion of the season. If you're in a big ag area and it just seems there's more food than the eye could see, I want you to think about late winter when all those crops are harvested. Are you seeing groups of 50, 60 deer all bundled up? That's because they're hungry and they're not finding food and you probably need to, even in that area where there's ample food during the summer, harvest more does. Or maybe the farmers are screaming about crop damage and you could earn some hunting rights or make a friend with the farmer by removing some does from his property. If you haven't seen a deer track in three years and the ones you see are big, there's no need to harvest does. It sounds like for whatever reason, there's more resources and deer in that area, and you can back off the doe harvest. The doe side is pure biology, it's easy, but when we get to the buck side, it seems like that deer camp politics gets involved. Here's some knowns. A big determinant of antler size is age. When bucks get older, until they get senile, they tend to grow larger and larger antlers. If the club, the landowner, whatever it is, wants to see larger antlered bucks, you have to pass up those immature bucks and allow them to age and express more of their genetic potential. If you're in a state that gives multiple buck tags, some states still allow several bucks to be harvested, you still can't do that. Well, I'm just gonna shoot any buck I see and save one buck tag for that big antlered buck because you're harvesting the big antler bucks of the future. When you shoot those immature deer, there's not many mature deer to have big antlers for future hunts. If you're a big stud hunter and this is all born to you, you've been passing up bucks forever, are you doing your share? Are you harvesting does to help the deer herd? If you like chasing those big antlers, you want an overall healthy deer herd. Healthy does having healthy fawns, and that means there's ample food and cover for all the deer, which usually requires removing some does every year. In a really healthy deer herd with plenty of groceries, 
you need to remove about 20 or 30 percent of the does a year to keep that deer population stable because that's how many fawns are hitting the ground each year. So it takes a pretty significant doe harvest to keep a population stable. Deer camp politics, as I call it, sure has made deer hunting a lot more confusing than it used to be. I can remember hunting with my father and my brother-in-law and some friends on public land here in southern Missouri. And man, it was a great time camping out, just having fun, and celebrating every deer that was harvested. We not only celebrated the experience, but that fresh venison we were taking home. My family and some friends process several deer every year. We've got some Cabela's processing gear that makes that job really easy and the venison tastes great later on. We hear a lot about preseason scouting, hanging tree stands, practicing with the bow. I think it's just as important to make sure you're ready to process meat because that's the real reward of hunting, being a provider for your family. I hope you have plenty of venison to process this year and while you're out there, you take some time to enjoy creation and even more importantly, that you seek the Creator's will for your life and apply that every day. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.